Hey everybody, welcome to our Go Moment today. Um, we have Dan Corbicello in the house, former CFO of Christian Life Center, was on staff here for 20 years, right Dan? That's right. Yep. And so um, we're going to talk about Haiti Initiative today. He just, he may have stepped out of church life, but he did not step out of the mission of the gospel and uh, caring for others and serving in another part of the world. Dan, how are things going in Haiti? Tell us about it. Well, Haiti, Haiti's in upheaval right now. A lot of political problems, a lot of health problems, a lot of uh, problems uh, just all over. Haiti, Haiti is a horrible country. Um, and the people are, are severely, uh, severely being tested right now. Yeah. So, um, when was your first trip to Haiti? Tell us My a first trip to Haiti was in connected. July of 2010. Okay. And what was, what, you know, um, I know, because I know your story a little bit, missions was not the thing you ever saw yourself actually really doing, was it? Never. Uh, as most people know, my wife died in, uh, in November of 2009, so I was sitting in a board meeting uh, two weeks later, a budget board meeting at the Christian Life Center, and John Sullivan was sitting across the row from me, and he says, hey, Dan, he says, there's a church up North Jersey that's going to be going to Haiti in July. Um, I'll go if you'll go. And I looked at him and said, you must be insane. There's no <laughs> way I'm going to Haiti. That was my wife's thing, not mine. Yeah. How about But that? lo and behold, I did go in July. Uh, to say the least, it didn't go well. I expect to hear this, uh, this voice of God to tell me what to do next in my life, as I was very, very lost. Yeah. Uh, but it never happened. So I was pretty disgruntled at the time. And then uh, a few months later, uh, Leslie and Frank Jacobs came and was talking about Hope Alive. And as I was sitting in that front pew, uh, I had a voice say, Dan, you need to take a team to Haiti. Mm -hmm. And I looked around thinking that the guy in back of me was talking to me and it wasn't him. Yeah. God spoke to me again and said, you need to take a team to Haiti. I said, God, I don't know anything about taking teams to Haiti. He says, you're an administrator, you will figure it out. Okay. So 25 trips later, I was still figuring it out. How about that? 25 trips to Haiti. And so, um, um, what, when you first started this also, I think a big part of, you know, the, the initial launch was this ministry to, in the orphanage. And, um, you know, I remember your- That's correct. Haiti, um, Haiti initiative for the children. Tell us a little bit about- Yes. Um, what you did with the orphanage and how you put a lot into that, a lot of time. We, we resourced a lot of people there. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the day we, the day we went up to the orphanage was the very last thing that I wanted to do on the mission trip to uh, Hope Alive Clinic. And I have to say, I wasn't real happy about going up to a bunch of screaming children. But as we went up to that orphanage that day, and we, we, we climbed that hill straight up into the mountain, and we stepped across that threshold, God told me, he says, that's what I want you, this is what I want you to do. And I said, are you serious? I don't even like children. Yeah. And I said, what do you want me to do? He says, whatever's at your hand to do. Go to missions. So for the next 25 trips, so for the next 25 trips, we built roads, we fed the children, we had revivals, we taught the kids English as a second language, we took care of uh, up, upgrading facilities. We did whatever was in our hand to do between the orphanage and Hope Alive Clinic. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I was on one of those trips and it was, uh, it was really a, a real heartfelt commitment from you, Dan, and your team. We're so faithful to go over and over again uh, just to create a better environment for these kids, give them some hope, give them a future, let them know that they were loved. Right. Are you still keeping in touch with some of those kids, Dan? Some of those kids are in their 20s now. <laughs> and uh, me and my some of my other team, we still hear from them. Yeah. Things are not going well. Yeah. There's no work. There's no jobs. 
um, it's just a day-to-day -day existence. Yeah, boy, we sure, we sure really, you know, having been to Haiti, it is one of the poorest countries on earth. I mean, it is one of the most impoverished uh, countries. So the, the yes. need is great, isn't it? Very much so. So in this process, Very you much so. shifted um, and you started, you, how did you come up with the CAP program and tell them, tell our viewers what that's about? Well, CAP program is, is concrete, a uh, concrete uh, assistance program where we were, we, we give people money for materials so that they can finish their houses. One day, Reno and I was driving around downtown Haiti uh, where we were at in Mariani and I saw all these unfinished houses and I said, how come there's so many unfinished houses? He said, the people get them started and they don't have the money to finish them. And so God began to speak to me about going in a different direction about all the homeless children that were in Haiti that didn't have housing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just began to unfold. And in January of 2016, I made the decision to uh, turn the trips over to uh, the leaders of Christian Life Center. And I began to embark upon uh, doing homes for homeless children. Now that could, uh, that could comprise of just giving them materials or actually doing some repairs uh, helping them partially rebuild or build the house from the ground up. So it encompassed all those different aspects of, uh, of assistance to homeless children. And since January of 2016, I am presently working on my 67th home. Oh my gosh, I had no idea you had built that many homes for families. That is incredible. Yep, 67. Wow. Yes. So, yes. so how many home, when's the last time you visited Haiti? It was, uh, it was two years ago in March. And how many It's really not safe to, right, go ahead. It's really not safe to go down. So I can, I probably don't see myself going down to Haiti again. Yeah. But because of all the teams that I built in Haiti, I still get the job done, I still get work done. They don't need my presence to be there in order to continue to build homes. I work through the workers. Not only do we build homes for the homeless people, but we put people to work who haven't worked for years. Uh, just for instance, the house we're building right now, there are three mothers that are single mothers with babies that are bringing their babies to the job every day that haven't worked in over two years, we were able to employ them and give help them make money to be able to support their families. So that's the residual of blessing the people who are homeless. Hmm. How, how much does it cost to build a home, Dan? The average home there? Uh, the home I'm building right now is probably the average home that I built, uh, probably about uh, 600 square feet. Uh, two rooms with a, with probably a little uh, terrace on it. it cost me about $5,500. Wow, that's amazing. Which is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. But you know, um, the reason for uh, all these abandoned houses was because of the hurricane, is that correct? So you went there right after the hurricane the first time, right? That's when I started, that's when I started with the housing. And there were still houses that were in shambles from the earthquake of 2010. Oh, the earthquake, that's right. 2010, I'm sorry, that was an earthquake. I keep forgetting that, yeah, yeah. And the hurricane in 2016 also created a lot of homelessness. Mm. Well, the, what, a, what a great work you're doing. One of the things um, I love about your ministry, Dan, is that you really have turned almost the whole thing over to the nationals. Like it is really, you're relying on them for what homes to build. You're relying on them um, to buy the, to plan it, to organize it. You, really, it is the Haitian people restoring themselves uh, with your guidance. Is that correct? That's correct. I came to the realization in 2016 when I started doing this, that if it was dependent upon my being there on site, it was going to be very little that I could accomplish. 
Yeah. So therefore, I began empowering the people in Haiti, uh, different pastors and different social workers, uh, working with them, building a trust with them. And now, I all I do is send them the money, approve the job. They send me pictures every single day of the progress of the work. I put it on Facebook. And this is how I let the people know who follow me what's going on in Haiti. And again, it's the only way that I have to raise money. I don't beg for money. I don't send out newsletters for money. Uh, I simply put it on Facebook. I let people know what I'm doing and I let God do the rest. A long time ago, I told God that I wasn't a fundraiser. And he yeah. told me, he said, you tell the story and I'll take care of the money. And he's been faithful in doing that for almost 10 years now that I've been in Haiti. That's I've never had to turn down a request. I've never had to turn down a job. Boy. So God has been faithful. And all of my Haiti heroes out there, I call those my Haiti heroes, the people who donate to help these homeless children. Again, if you're watching this Go Moment, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Yeah, uh, we do support Dan and uh, we love doing it. It's just part of our, you know, it's part of our history, but it's also part of our present ministry like we just want to keep going um and you're doing such a wonderful job there so the best way people can reach out to you though dan if they want to give is through facebook that is the best tool to stay connected with what you're doing on a regular basis yes that's correct and uh as far as giving goes they can they can venmo me they can uh, go to paypal uh, they can go to my website uh you know they can send a check, you know, many different ways. Yeah. They can contact me personally and usually I'll see what's best for them. Yeah. You try and work with them on that. Well, Dan, thank you. Thank you yes. for your time today. And uh, this guy's living in Florida now. So he is, uh, uh, you know, totally changed uh, his focus, but not his passion for the Lord and serving God and fulfilling his destiny. Dan, thank you so much for your time today. It's great. Good. Thank you very much for having me. All right. God bless. Thank you, everybody. This is a, a really a beautiful story of how God can um, use a nation, the people within the nation themselves, when we provide opportunities, we provide guidance, we provide finances. Um, they really can do the work. They really are called. They are really called to minister to their own people. And um, I just love the channel that, you know, um, Dan has set up for that success for that country. It's going to start with them. They're going to have to carry the torch, fan the flame and do the work. So uh, praise God for such a, uh, so for such a witness, Dan, um, to, uh, to all of us and, and for missions. Amen. Bless everybody. Thanks for joining us today. See you next week. Thank you.